Broadcasting live from the Vegas Video Network Studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Talk Tales with Chris Phillips. Coming up on today's program, Las Vegas colorist of the decade, what? Michael Boychek. And now a man whose pillowcases are made from the Crown Royal Velvet Bags we all love, Mr. Chris Phillips. Yeah! Well, thank you, my friends. Uh, what a wonderful feeling to be back in the driver's seat of the wildly successful new show on the Vegas Video Network called Talk Tales. I have to apologize for those of you who are diehard Talk Tale fans that tuned in last week and we were not here. I am so sorry. I was in dress rehearsals for a brand new show that I just debuted on the strip, Scott. Yes, I know, it's very exciting. Yes, I came to Las Vegas five years ago with the dreams of being the next Wayne Newton or Frank Sinatra or Elvis Presley. Well, five years into it, I have now become a game show host. <laughs> <laughs> Wink Martindale, baby. Yes, I am, I, my idol, is Gene Rayburn yeah. from Match Game. <laughs> yes. Sure. Uh, and and uh, oh, what the, what the hell's it? What's the guy's name on uh, Family Feud? Uh, Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson. Dawson. Richard yeah. Dawson. I oh, you know, I'll tell you. There's two entertainers in my life that I thought if I could be that guy, I'd be going somewhere. One is Elvis, and two is Richard Dawson. There you go. You know why? No. Because they always kiss the girls. Ah, that explains a lot. Yes, and I like kissing the girls, I, Scott. That's what I mean. And so, um, as of this last Thursday, at the Imperial Palace showroom on the Strip, I am the new host of a game show that you may remember from the 50s through the 80s called Name That Tune. <laughs> I can name that tune not in 10 notes, but it's now 10 seconds. See, we've updated that. Oh, is that right? Yes. It's all about DJs and stuff like that, playing seconds of music, not oh, so notes. Oh, they don't have a band that's doing a DJ No, it's thing. a DJ. We're, uh, we're hip and... and or with it, with the kids. With the kids. <laughs> Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Uh, my co-host, uh, they refer to her as the Tune Girl, is my uh, much better halves, Marley Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, did I say that? Uh, it's kind of like the Vanna, a singing Vanna White. We come out, we sing a few songs, kind of like a Stephen Eady thing, and then we get right down to it. We bring up 50 guests from the crowd, uh, and then we go through a series of games, and we narrow it down to one lucky contestant who theoretically and possibly could walk out of there with $10,000 in cash. Mm. Not a bad deal. That's not bad. And so we've been having a blast. But the problem is, Scott, um, in 27 years of being in entertainment, I've never had to really work for a living. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, I, it, just, it never re occurred to me that uh, people work during the weekdays. Yes, I, I remember that you, were, you said that you were a little shocked when we had that conversation. Yeah, um, I have somehow uh, pulled off the fact that I have not worked more than Friday and Saturday night for over two decades. I am now working every single day. <laughs> we have a show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which cuts way into my sleeping. You're working weekends and weekdays. And then we go directly from there to doing our high-energy hip-hop nightclub concert at Red Rock. Love and that. now we're doing Saturday nights doing these big concerts for hundreds of people out by the pool at the M Resort. You're killing it over there, aren't you? Oh, it's going great. We're having a blast. And uh, so, uh, you know, for the first time in my life, I've had to be responsible to something. And the thing that bothers me, it's the first time, literally, in, in over 20 years, I'm not in charge of something. Mm. So I have a boss. Do you have much <laughs> input in the, uh, in the development of that? No, I, I, have, I have no say <laughs> on anything. The, <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard that is for me, Scott? I have no say at all. That's awesome. But thank God, because they actually want this to be successful. <laughs> Whoops, wait a minute, note to self. <laughs> so yeah, we, uh, it's put on by a company called Spy Entertainment. They also do Human Nature, uh, Divas Las Vegas, uh, Thunder Down Under, which I used to be in. <laughs> no. 
then they got Australian Bee Gees. They do all these shows, but they, uh, the creators and the uh, people who own the brand named that tune came to them and said, you are the perfect company for it. We want to do it in the Imperial Palace showroom. And so we started last Thursday. It's going great. And what's really interesting about it is it's primarily locals that are coming in to see the show. No kidding. Which is really cool. I like that particularly. That's nice. But, uh, yeah, but don't, don't, don't think that I'm not still going out till 4 or 5 in the morning. <laughs> well, isn't that a With little harder my, to do now? Yeah, you know, because my daughter and I still like to party. I'm sorry, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, folks, uh, I'm so excited about today. But before we get started, I'd like to remind you that if you have any kind of comments or questions, please feel free to do one of a couple different things. You can call us at our toll-free number. Uh, that is 866-966-4599. I have been saying that now for the last several weeks, and I hope you keep putting that number on the screen because I have yet to memorize it. <laughs> uh, you can also email us, of course, at talktales at video. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I pretty, he hates when I screw this up. I've only been saying that for 13 weeks. You know, it's so simple. It's right in front of me. Talktales at VegasVideoNetwork.com. If you have any questions uh, or comments of any kind, you can also find us now on iTunes. Uh, of course, YouTube, which is what all the kids are into. That thing on the, they call the internet. Oh, that, I'm sorry, this is on the internet. That's right. <laughs> and now we're on a cool new uh, thing called Roku. That's R-O-K-U. It's very cool. You can see us there as well. Uh, I think we're syndicated on the radio on Friday nights here in Vegas too, correct? We are. Uh, What's that station? Uh, yeah, that sounds cool. And you have all your shows on that, correct? All, all, of them. all of them except one. One's a little too profane for it. In other words, ours. <laughs> no, no, you're on there. <laughs> oh, we are. You are. Oh, yeah. that's great. Well, this is a, a really, really, really exciting day for me uh, because of the guest that we have is not only uh, somebody who is a celebrity in his own right here in Las Vegas, but he is an absolute dear friend of mine. Uh, have you ever seen the movie, Scott, Six Degrees of Separation with uh, Will Smith? Uh, yeah. With Will Smith? Yeah, do you know the, the premise? I know the of, concept. Of do you know it, what yeah. I'm talking about, the concept of I Six do. Degrees of Separation? I do. That everybody, theoretically, is connected to yes. six yes. people? Well, when you think of Las Vegas, uh, it's a very small town, believe it or not, and everybody knows everybody. But if you were to take one person in this entire city who is connected to everybody, and if there was such a thing, even I would say I would go as low as two degrees of separation <laughs> for every single person in this town. It's, it's not an entertainer. It's not a politician. And it's not a casino exec. It's not a president of uh, a major corporation. It's a hair colorist. And he is with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so happy to have with us the world-renowned colorist to the stars, my friend, Mr. Michael Boychuk. Yeah. So great to be here, Chris. Michael, I can't tell you what an honor and a treat. I've been trying to get you on here for weeks, and you've been avoiding me. So finally, I, I promised you some booze. That's usually <laughs> and a night what does it. <laughs> <laughs> but I am, I, I'm absolutely thrilled. And uh, just to uh, let those of uh, us watching out here that don't live in Las Vegas, my friend Michael is without question the number one hair colorist, probably not just here in Las Vegas, but in, throughout the entire Southwest. Uh, you have two different salons here in town, one of which is the premier luxury salon at Caesars Palace called Color. Color, it's just fantastic. And it, it was voted um, one of the top five most beautiful salons in the country. But you left out one of my other salons. I have three. Crimp. Print at oh Palms my Play. gosh! If, well, of course you do. I forget, I've been I've been to all three, obviously many times. Yep. Uh, and your your other one, of course, is uh, Amp Salon, so which cool. is yeah. I, I partnered with George Maloof on that one, and I've been there ten years. It's like just like a little family place for me. I love it. Yeah, a family place, and and on any given day you can see Britney Spears or Paris Hilton coming through. Not exactly a typical local neighborhood salon. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have quite a few uh, clientele that, that come in that you'd recognize, that's for sure. Well, you have uh, made quite a name for yourself, uh, not only here in Las Vegas, but of course in Los Angeles, which I think you started uh, in LA. How did, how did you get your start in the business of hair? 
Well, I got to be honest with you. It's like um, I didn't know what else to do, and I like girls. So, <laughs> and, and, and I, I really wasn't that talented at too many other things. So uh, I saw that movie Shampoo with Warren yeah, Beatty. Yeah, Warren Beatty. I love yep. that movie. That's cool. And after yeah, he I got saw, the babes, didn't he? Oh, yeah. And I just said, you know what? It, this is one way. I was, I was really shy at the time, too. So it's like I, I'm like, this way I can meet girls, and, and I can make some money, hopefully. And uh, it worked out for me. It worked out really good. And when did you get your start? Well, How I, old were you? I, I got my license when I was 17, 17 years old. Wow. Yeah. Now, in the Los Angeles area? No, no. I was in a small town in Pennsylvania. Oh, really, wow. really small. I mean, I went to school at a place called Empire Beauty School in Sunbury, Pennsylvania. There was probably only a few thousand people there, to be honest with you. Wow. Yep. And well. then, and then uh, I progressed. I went to uh, Jacksonville, Florida, which is another pretty small city if you want to break it down. And uh, I just started working there. And then uh, I read a book, Shake Your Head Darling, by uh, Jose Bear. And I said, I want to work with him. This guy seems amazing to me. And, uh, you know, I sent him a he was bunch one of, of the biggest names in the industry yeah, at, at that time in particular. Yeah, he was on uh, Rodeo Drive. And, I mean, I just thought that was the best thing in the world. So I sent him some pictures of my work. And, well, I didn't really get a response. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent more. And I kept sending. And then basically uh, his secretary called and said, you know, we see your work. We see all this. It's great. But um, unless you're going to move here, we're, you really you can't work out here because I just wanted to go train with him. And then uh, after I heard all that, I uh, sent Jose a bottle of Dom Perignon. Uh-huh. Yep. And then he called me personally and was like, because everybody in my salon made fun of me. I was in a little salon. They're like, why are you trying to work in Beverly Hills? You're from Jacksonville, Florida. It's not like you're, you know, some famous guy or anything like that. And uh, I sent him some uh, Dom Perignon and he called me. So just like myself, the way to his heart is through his liver. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you can see I'm here too. But, <laughs> but uh, Jose called me and he said, thank you for the, the, the champagne. I said, well, thank you for calling me. And he's like, um, no, I'm, I'm calling you to thank you for the champagne. I said, yeah, but thanks for calling me. It means a lot. He goes, all right, when, you, when are you going to be here? I want to meet you. You're kidding. So basically, I, I, I said, I can fly out anytime. And I, was, I had a job and everything in Jacksonville, and I'd worked for a number of color companies. So basically, I just dropped everything and flew out to meet him. And then uh, he invited me. How old were you at the time? At the time, I was like maybe 25. Really? Yeah. That's amazing because, you know, like I said, especially then, that name was, was internationally known. And for him to, you know, what does it take, a bottle of champagne and you get a meeting with him? Yeah. And actually, uh, it, you know, he was famous for doing Farrah Fawcett. So yes. I was so excited just to be looking through all the newspapers and the magazines and see his name and his pictures and stuff. And then for him to call me and say, come on out. It was, it was an incredible uh, emotional thing for me. I, I just loved it. So you met with him and then what happened from there? Well... He basically said, you know, nice meeting you, all that. First of all, when I got there, I walk into the salon, I'm thinking, you know, this is going to be the best day of my life. So I get there, and they said, well, Jose's not here. No. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> and then, so I waited a little bit, and um, I, came, you know, I, I came back and everything, and he was not there again. They say he's running a little late. So finally, I was supposed to meet him around 1. I think I met him at 3.30. So, you know, I walk in, I'm all excited. So I'm walking around the salon like, you know, I'm going to see everything, do everything. And uh, his partner kept to me and said, can you please sit down? So it was like a little, you know, nervous a time for me at, at the moment. And then next, you know, Jose comes out, says, come on back. And then he just made me feel so good. And, and we kind of hit it off like that. We became good friends. So I'm assuming through uh, having the, the opportunity to work with him is how you established your high-end celebrity clientele to start out, or did you? Absolutely. If, I, uh, I mean, I always say you have to work with the best if you want to be the best. So I didn't really care what my position would be with him. I just wanted to work with the best and, and work my way up. But uh, he invited me out one time to do an academy. And, uh, you know, people were flying in to learn from him. And the colorist didn't show up. So I said, well, I'll do it for you. And the next thing I know, oh. you know, I do a couple of models. Then all of a sudden, the artistic director says, oh, my God, you got to move out here immediately. We want you to work in Beverly Hills. So I never really had to fill out an application or anything. They just said, move here. So obviously, your specialty and your forte is primarily dealing with hair color. Yeah. You're not necessarily a hair cutter or stylist. It's, it's primarily dealing with yeah. color. Yeah. At the time, I did everything. But uh -huh. when you work uh, with Jose, he's from Europe. So he said to me, um, you have to do one or the other, cutting or coloring. Uh -huh. So I That's said, well, I'm better at color. So next, you know, and then I also told myself, also, I want to do all your clients. So I uh, started doing color. I got hired, and I stayed there like eight, ten years. 
Well, that's fantastic. Well, congratulations. And uh, obviously, you, you, you created quite a name for yourself in Los Angeles. Uh, you established an, an amazing clientele. How in the world and what in the world made you want to come to Las Vegas? Well, you know, I was doing hair with Jose 10 years, so I'm getting in my, you know, 35, 40 area. So I, I, when he offered, uh, his, his partner, his name was Laurent. And he goes, I want you to work with my partner because I travel a lot. So we did, and we became good friends. You know, we used to, he used, Laurent was the guy who used to do all the uh, guest models, and uh, he was pretty well known himself. So Laurent and Jose uh, separated their business, and he opened up his own salon. And then Laurent said, if you come with me, I'll make you a partner, and you can go to uh, Las Vegas and run my salon. So that's how I got out here. Well, now, what salon was that? This is that was at the Bellagio, okay. and it was called Privé. And, yes, um, yes, that was a beautiful salon. Yeah, it was one of the, I mean, I was so excited and everything. So you started right in the upper echelon of salons in the Absolutely. city. Absolutely. The Bellagio, you know, was a fantastic <coughs> casino. Everything was cool. But at the time, that's when Steve Wynn was uh, in the process of selling the Mirage and all that and, you know, divesting himself of those casinos. So basically, Laurent and, and Steve Wynn separated, and there was no more salon at Privé. You know, it was called Privé? Sure. So the next thing I know, a, a few of my clients locally said, um, you know, why don't you go over to the Venetian? We have some contacts there in that. And, uh, you know, next thing I know, I was at Canyon Ranch, and I was uh, the salon director there. Speaking of Canyon Ranch at the Venetian, uh, when Marley and I came to town five years ago, uh, as you can tell, I, I'm not a natural blonde, contrary to what you may <laughs> think. You know, I have this beautiful shade of mousy ground gray, which I really like. Um, Marley, of course, bleaches her hair, and we, coming to town, needed to seek out someone that we thought would be best suited for... Uh, maintaining our little bleached bobblehead uh, look. Everywhere we went said, if you want to go to the best, you've got to go see Michael Boychuk at the Venetian. We were, we were actually nervous to meet you because we, your, your reputation preceded you through uh, all the celebrity mentions in magazines, and you were obviously, you'd established yourself with some degree of celebritism here in town. But even more so than that, which is why we really came to you, is that everybody said, this is the nicest guy in town, and he knows everything about everybody in this town. And <laughs> what's so interesting is, as many people who do go to salons and have a hairstylist or a colorist, you are not just uh, somebody who provides a service. You're like a therapist <laughs> I don't know who so, to that. us. And I, I think that's yeah. why people seek you out. And so we, we made an appointment with you, and you treated us, Michael, as though we were like your best friends. And speaking of some of your best friends, and the reason I bring this up is we have on this show something we call the live chat room. We have somebody in the live chat room that would like to ask you a question really quick off the bat, if you don't mind okay. fielding one of those questions. Scott, who well, you, do we, you know what, I'm you, dying to know who was well, on there. Actually, it was, they were saying, uh, does, does Michael do Chris's hair? <laughs> <laughs> you started going right into it, so, so that was the uh, question. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Talk Tales. My name is Zoe Bowie, or actually that's my drinking name here. I go by my real name, Chris Phillips. See, my mom is so proud that I actually use my real name for the first time in 15 years. So you're watching Talk Tales with Chris Phillips. I've got my dear friend Michael Boychuk from Color Salon, Amp Salon, and Primp. Primp. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk to you about... Uh, uh, some of your involvement here in the community, and I appreciate you tuning in. We'll be right back. Yeah. No pressure. Hi, I'm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dennis Silvers from. Can't think of the name of my damn show. Golf and other four-letter words, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. I think. Hey friends, welcome back to the Vegas Video Network. I am Chris Phillips, you're watching Talk Tales, and you caught me, you caught me. Oh, I wish I could say that we pretend to drink on this show, but that's just not the case. And Michael, I gotta say, you were one of my favorite guests, not just because you're one of my dear friends, but you're somebody who is actually sharing some spirits with me. Thank God, yes. you believe in the maverick spirit of Las Vegas, and I appreciate that, because there's nothing like having too much to drink in the afternoon. <laughs> but. Before we went to the break, I was talking about your involvement in the community, and, and I think one of the things that's, that, that puts you in the public eye and has created your celebritism is 
not only your illustrious list of uh, famous females and such that you do, but you're actively involved in uh, some of the more philanthropic aspects of this city uh, with charities and such. Matter of fact, we just did a charity thing together on Saturday night out at the M Resort for some good friends of yours who were raising money for Project Teddy that is to benefit children with cancer. Are you, do you do a lot of charity work on various levels? You know, I try to. I try to donate to, you know, all the local uh, charities, but my uh, big one is, you know, for animals. I will do anything for animals. I know you're a big fan of animals, for sure. And actually, uh, we had two dinners for the Animal Foundation, and one year we raised 63000 and another year we raised 65000 So that was super. Um, you know, I, I love to save animals, and that, that really made me feel good. You're a, a, a lover of uh, dogs. Yes, I am. Particularly. How many dogs do you have? Five. You have five dogs? Yep. Wow. They're the cutest little things. I have two Dotsons. Um, I have. I a, had a Datsun B210, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, that's broke down I, on the freeway. I still drive it. But. That's why I should have called them a wiener dog. I got two wiener dogs, a Lassopso, a Shih Tzu, and a Pekingese. Oh, that's And cute. they're the sweetest little oh. things. You know? They run the house. I can imagine they do. And, uh, well, uh, I know that uh, certainly you are one half of one of the greatest couples in Las Vegas. You are one of the luckiest guys I know to be able to have not only met, but married your wife, Karen. How did you meet her? She's, a, she's so amazing. And what, what's her, this, that was, what's she up to these days? Well, actually, um, she really is an amazing girl. And when I met her, she was a crazy girl. Literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> she was in the show Crazy Girls, and I started doing the cast of Crazy Girls, and she came in a few times. And, and I, she still stayed with you? Yeah, I know. Hard to believe. <laughs> I always say, um, you know, that's the best thing I, I ever have to be uh, in Vegas, though. She's, uh, she's sweet, kind, and beautiful. But, um, she's lovely. Uh, she invited me to her show. My brother was visiting, and at the time, I didn't really know anybody, and I thought that was so cool to be invited to a show, you know, with the star of the show. And it made right. me look good in front of my brother, <laughs> you know. So uh, we went to the show, and um, at, she said, you know, Michael, if you want to stay afterwards, um, you, you know, your brother and I, you, you can come down and meet some girls. You know, I'll, I'll bring them out to meet you. So I was like, that is so cool. And then, then I said, you know, you're being so nice. Why don't I take you to dinner next week? And pretty much that's been it. Well, you guys make a wonderful couple. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be more honored to, like I say, not only go to you and have you uh, do your magic on my uh, my my hair that is thinning as we speak, but uh, you know your your friendship has meant the world to, to Marley and you know, I. Of when course, you came in though, I don't know if you guys know this. I always read all the magazines and look at magazines and see who's hot. You guys were the two hottest people at the time. You were in every magazine. So when I saw you guys coming in to get your hair done, I was like, oh my god, they're coming to me. So I was just as excited. I was, oh, I'm sure you were. You're absolutely true, and you know, and you know for a fact, I. Um, the different casino people I know that I like. Hey, these guys are so cool, and and I, you know. Well, speaking of casino people and, and cool people, you know, I hate to put you on the spot, but okay. this is really interesting to me, and I think uh, what a lot of people watching are probably curious is to who, if, if I may ask, who is some of your clients that uh, some of us would know? Because it's such a laundry list of stars. I know you could be here Over all day. Over the years, them, I mean, um, I mean. Paris, I do her. She's do. kind of your signature client. Absolutely. When you, say, you walk into your color salon, there's yeah. a portrait of There's Paris. usually, just oh. like, you know, with Ken Pavez and with Jessica Simpson, sure. there's usually one person that kind of, um, you know, signifies your look. Yes. And I do a lot of blondes. And that's what I was known yes. for in L.A. So Paris was, you know, the one that kind of, I, you know, made me, you know, appreciate the blondes the most and maybe most recognizable. And you've been doing her hair exclusively for years, haven't Since you? Since she was 13 years yep. old. Yep. And uh, she came into the wow. salon you know, with her little ferret at the time and everything with her mom. And her mom said, can you put a few highlights in? Don't go overboard, just a few highlights. Her ferret? Yeah, she had ferrets. She was always in animals. So oh. so next thing I know, we do a few. Um, do you do the ferret's hair? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, don't do the ferret's hair. But uh, that's how I started, you know, working uh, with Paris. And she's just a wonderful girl, and it's been fun. She is she's sweet as she can be, uh, contrary to what some people may think. She is just a delight. And, yeah, uh, I mean, you've met her, and she's, a, she's, she's always, lovely. always cordial, always nice. And, you know, misconceptions are out there, but they she's are. really one of the nicest people she certainly is. I've ever met. I, I should say so. So tell, give me some names. Well, I mean, it depends. I mean, over the years, I've done, like, Jenny Garth, Josie Bissett, Donna Dierico, um, P. 
Pia Zadora, Carol Bear Sager, um, it, you know, <laughs> Susan Anton, Robin Leach. <laughs> Who have you said no to? Because um, I know the answer to this question. <laughs> actually, it, it was a, 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 a challenging time for this person, but... Yeah, okay. You know, I, I would I would always love to help everyone that comes to my salon. But uh, Britney Spears came in, and it was right before she, uh, you know, shaved her head. <laughs> right. And yeah. they asked me, they said, would you put some highlights in? And I said, no, because it was, you know, at the I time. I admire that. Very stressed out hair, and it wouldn't have taken good highlights, you know? Well, I think Britney might be in our chat room. I'm not sure if that's who has a question, <laughs> but somebody does. <laughs> what, what's the question, Scott? Yes, Brittany just called to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. uh, Nate has a good question. He goes, how much is Michael involved with the day-to-day -day operations of his business? That's an interesting question, Michael, because you're not only a colorist, you're a very successful businessman. And to expand on that question, mm -hmm. uh, you've gone into business for yourself, and I think this is very interesting because... Uh, relating to that question, how important is it, as I have learned myself, to incorporate your name as, the, as your brand? And what does that mean to the success of uh, your business by making sure that Michael Boychuk is in the name well, of the know, business? You know, that's interesting, though. When you, I don't know if you felt the same way, but when I first started doing hair, and then, you know, you, you start building more and more clients, and then people, you know, want to be associated with you, so you know, then you're offered different business opportunities. And at the time, though, I was real hesitant to put my name on a salon. I just said, you know, I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about the salon and the people coming in. So I, it took me a long time before I said, you know what, okay, you know, the work is there. It speaks for itself, so I want to put my name on it. But it took me a long time. I, I didn't feel comfortable doing it. Well, I think this is amazing. I've always been a fan of Las Vegas, and in particular, I've been a fan of Caesar's Palace. It was the first, one of the first hotels I ever... Uh, went into as a, as a kid, and there's, there's something, there's a grandeur to Caesar's Palace. How cool is it to know that the only two permanent names on the entire edifice of Caesar's Palace is Caesar's Palace and Color Salon by Michael Boychuk? How cool is that? You know, it, it's, it's uh, humbling. Permanently on the building. It's humbling. Uh, Gary Schlesner, the president over there, gave me an opportunity, and um, that's, the first name, that's the first time I put my name to a salon, the first time ever. So I said yes, because Caesar's Palace is, 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 is Vegas. It it's is everything. Vegas. So when he offered me that, I was just, I just, I jumped on it. And um, my friend Faye Resnick came and designed it. Yes. And the salon, if you haven't seen it, is, is really the most beautiful salon in the city. There's nothing like well, it. Well, I think it's probably one of the most luxurious salons in the world. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. But uh, Faye Resnick did it all, and everything in the salon was made for that salon. But again, if Gary Schlesner wouldn't have given me the chance, I, I tell you, I got to thank him all the time. No, he, he's, a, again, uh, good people gravitate towards each other. And, you know, besides having an illustrious list of celebrities, you also cater and, I don't want to say service, <laughs> but you do the hair, color the hair, of casino executives and their wives and entertainers and and. and What's so interesting, and the, one of the reasons I had you on here today is that everybody in town knows you because everybody or their girlfriends or their mistresses <laughs> in this town, you've got to add that word, uh, go to Michael Boychuk. And so what's been so wonderful about knowing you is that you not only are everybody's friend, is it's that you connect each other with each other with their businesses. As an example, you have set me up with business connections that have helped me tremendously. You introduced me to various friends. I've become very good friends with Vince Neal, as a, as a, which we were out drinking last two nights ago, and that, that's always interesting. But because of you, I got to become friends with my idol. And that, that's a similar story with so many people in this town that you say, you know what, I need to hook you up with this president of this hotel and to make this happen for you. You're always looking out for the better interest of those clients of yours that you get along with so well, uh, you're, you're like a power broker while you're doing hair. Well, you know what, you know what the best thing about that is? is If I introduce somebody to you, then, then they feel like I've done them a favor too. See, I always try to put two pe good people together, and when you know good people, it's just a natural thing to do. So 
you know, it was, it's, it was like when uh, I, I knew they needed somebody at the Palms, you know, I said, Chris and Marley are the best. And you, you were instrumental in getting our gig at the Palms, which is amazing. How many, how many colorists at your hair salon act as an agent for getting a band, a major gig at a major casino in Las Vegas? Well, I was a That's little, amazing. I was a little selfish there, too, though, because I have a salon there, and I knew if you guys were there, <laughs> there'd be a lot more people coming in. So it was, it was a little selfish on that one. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, folks, you're watching Vegas Video Network. My name is Chris Phillips, and our program is called Talk Tales. Today we have not only colors to the celebrities, but uh, the power broker in Las Vegas, Mr. Michael Boychuk. We'll be back in just a second. I want to talk to you about what you got going on lately. We'll see you in just a minute. This is David Ivey for Pub Crawl. It's funny because is David. You should, you should, no, you should just leave it on. Hi, I'm David Ivey from Pub Crawl, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. And scene. Scott, yes. you don't give me enough time to slip the booze <laughs> in the cup without people seeing me. Well, I can ask a question from the chat room while you're doing that. Please. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Are you going from vodka to crown? Yeah. This isn't good. just crown. This is extra rare crown royal. Or is it? There's only ten. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was iced tea. Well, my, I, there's only ten bottles of this in the world, and I want you to share it with me. Okay. So here's what Bill G wants to know. That's good. B Bill asks, do a lot of casino execs really get their hair colored? They're kind of surprised by that. <laughs> well, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, <laughs> don't you want to look your best? And casino executives want to look their best, too. So um, a lot of times people will come in either for conditioning treatments or maybe a little bit of tint. But yeah, casino executives definitely get their hair done, and uh, they appreciate that kind of service. Now, is that the kind of deal where you're not supposed to give their names out? Well, I don't. I wouldn't give their names out, but um, I, I, I would feel more comfortable not doing it. <laughs> Job security everywhere, you know. Sure. Um, obviously, you off, offer a lot of different services at your salon. Uh, one of which is uh, to provide the service, which is very popular these days, of hair extensions. Yeah. Uh, you work with a, a company exclusively. Uh, if I understand. Yeah, uh, I work with Hair Dreams, yes. and they're from Austria, and uh, we, I've got a really good uh, rapport with them, and you know we do a lot of business with them. So today, actually, they, they flew in a team from Austria to interview me about how we do so many extensions of that, because uh, they basically consider us the number one extension salon in the country. Oh, wow. Yeah. I know from personal experience of having to maintain Marley's extensions, they're not cheap either, are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, you Car. know... Car... Hair. <laughs> you got a new car too. <laughs> but, but um, <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> extensions can be expensive. <laughs> yes, but there's there's different grades, just like different grades of cars. So. <laughs> so, I mean, you, it depends on how, what you want in your in your car. Okay. <laughs> oh, because really, you can you can do some just for length. Then you don't need to add the thickness, right? But you can add thickness and length, and then it costs a little more. But extensions can be, you know, very manageable cost-wise. It, they're not as expensive as people think. But if somebody comes in with, you know, sh hair short, shorter like yours, and they want to have hair down to here. It's going to cost, you know, maybe a couple thousand. But a normal person come in and get either some lengthening or some thinning for around 500 to 700. It's not that big a deal. So what you're saying is it costs more for more thickness and length. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's that's how they like to uh, describe extensions because everybody used to just say, "I want a full head or a half head." But uh, what are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> but basically. It's, I believe there was a Cialis commercial about that as well. <laughs> but extensions are, I mean, if you just want to add some length or, or if somebody's got fine hair and they want to make it look a little thicker, you know, you don't, you don't have to really get that involved. And extensions are now really easy to take care of. But um, it's really great to have a good company because what people don't know is a lot of extensions are done with synthetic hair. Yes. And then if you have that, it feels like plastic. So, you know, boy, uh, boyfriend grabs your hair, it's like grabbing Barbie doll hair. Yeah, it feels like plastic, 
So we only deal with <laughs> hair dreams, which gets their hair from you know Euro a European source, uh -huh. and it feels totally natural. And the bonds are really, really small. Well, you do an incredible job there. Obviously, you've got a great staff, uh, a bunch of great people working for you. Obviously, we know them all very well, and they they uh, have become like a family to you. Obviously, now I, I got to hit on this really quick before we run out of time, Mr. Big Shot, <laughs> because you know you're a big deal when. You not only have a salon that's very successful, but when you start developing your own line of products. Now, if I understand correctly, you've now got your own line that is about to come out. Please tell us about what that's all about. Well, actually, when I was in LA, we started working with keratin a lot. To be honest with you, that's how long it's been. And um, it took this long. It's been like 20 years now. And basically, I have a new keratin product that's going to be coming out. We'll be doing an infomercial with it. Wow. And it takes frizz out of hair, and, and it can straighten hair, depending on the strength that you have. And it's one of the best ones ever. I just had it done in my hair. My hair is really hard to work with. It's frizzy and stuff, but I use You're that. as curly as Carrot Top, otherwise. Yeah, not quite that curly. No. But um, <laughs> it really does just make your hair feel a lot better. Now, what's this called? It's going to be called uh, Hair Flex. No, Straight Flex. Straight Flex, <laughs> straight flex by Michael Boychuk. And, um, again, it took me a long time to... You get the product right before I put my name on it. And this one is incredible. Well, I'm so proud of you. That's, that, that's big time when you have your own product line. And, uh, yeah, uh, I, I was excited. But again, you, you have to make sure you love the product. And, and uh, it's, use it it's yourself, a great product. For that yeah, I used it on me just the other day. Now, did you, do you color your own hair? No, I always have people in my salon do it. And to get back to what you were saying, I really do have the best staff. And without them, I wouldn't have a salon. So it's all about I know it. your staff, and, and I respect them totally. So Well, you know. when you come in there, it's like a party atmosphere and a family atmosphere, and, and it's, it's, a, it's almost like a treat to get to go see Michael Boychuk because you know that when you leave there, you're going to leave feeling better than when you came in there for various reasons. Well, we try, and, but like, like I said, if you have a, a great environment and great staff, it's, it's going to succeed. Do you mind answering another question for somebody that's in our live chat room? Scott, do we have another question? We do. Nate wants to know, is Michael planning to expand in Las Vegas? Um, Good question. Actually, no, I'm not trying to expand because, you know, it's, it's tough when you do too many, too, too many ventures. Yes. And I tell you. Wear think, yourself too thin. Yeah, I'm, I'm at Caesars four days, and I'm at the Palms two days. And I, you just, you don't want to spread yourself, you know, out there too much. And, and I have the best two locations in the city, so I, I don't, I'm not looking to expand in any way. And I've had offers in other cities, and I turn them down because, I mean, I don't know how many times you've seen people come and go here in Vegas if their base is somewhere else. You, you just can't do justice to your salon. You need to be there and, and work with people when they come in and make sure everybody's treated well. And you can't do it when you're not there. I'm sorry, you know. It, it just You're very hands-on. There's no doubt about it. Oh, that, that was a question, too, about being hands-on. And I'm very hands-on. If I'm, if I'm at uh, my salons, I, I want to make sure everybody's being taken care of. Well, uh, i got to tell you something. Um, this, this is an interesting question because uh, you may not even want to touch on this, but I... I <laughs> hey, touch on this? You're on Talktail, so you're going to get the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. Uh, I know that a couple years ago... Uh, there was somebody that you worked with and who was a dear friend of yours, I think, to some degree, who came to town and tried to, uh, to some degree, steal some thunder, so to speak. And how do you feel about competition? Do you think it's healthy to have some competition in town by somebody coming to town claiming to be the number one celebrity colorist? Uh, you know, I don't even have to mention somebody's name, but did, does that rub you wrong, or, or do you think that competition is healthy, so to no, speak? No, I think competition is healthy. Mm -hmm. um, although, if, if you come to a salon, it's like if I said that, you know, I'm Kim Kardashian's colors and I've never done her, I don't, I don't think that's cool. And so if you come to town, that's the only thing you should do is make sure that what you say is true. So, uh, but I think it, the more the merrier. The, the better people come in here, it makes everybody stronger. Because I know from personal experience, you know, we, we came to town and with the Zoe Boy brand, and we did a particular type of show. And then, you know, there's other shows that came in there and in, into town, and I don't mention their names, but it, all of a sudden we had uh, Wowie Zowie or something other <laughs> people that tried to take what we did and, with the same type of show. And now, granted, this, you know, there's a couple guys that have reputable names themselves, but they even 
went to the extreme of taking the name of your place and just twisting it ever so slightly. You know, and I found that kind of interesting. Well, you know, they always say, <laughs> you know, uh, copy and, and things <laughs> like that. Is, biggest form of flattery. Yeah. So that's one way to look at it. But the good thing is, if you have a name established and somebody's trying to, you know, to, to have a business off your business, there's always legal ways to fix that. So, <laughs> you know, there's only one Zoe Bowie. And I mean, you know, it's, just, it's not cool when people try to, you know, portray to be something they're not. So <laughs> wow. I'm very happy the way wow. everything's worked out. And again, I, no, but I, I love all the good people coming out here because then it just draws more people in, you know? It's really good when you're known as the, the Las Vegas is known as the city with the best restaurants, best entertainment, best hair salons. It's great that way. Well, I can tell you all um, from personal experience, if you're in Las Vegas and you want to have a uh, truly memorable experience, not just having your hair colored or styled or cut or having some extensions put in, but if you want to have a great time, please go see my friend Michael Boychuk over at Color Salon at Caesars Palace. The Amp Salon and Primp Salon at the wonderful, crazy-ass hotel called The Palms. And my friend, I couldn't be more proud to have you here finally. And uh, I thank you, and I, I hope that we're going to continue this, uh, this drinking outside of the show. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm ready to go. Well, I, Chris, thanks for having me. Uh, you're uh, a special person, a true talent, <laughs> and, and I really am glad I can call you friend. Well, thank you for everything you've done for me. On behalf of everybody here at the Vegas Video Network, uh, I'm Chris Phillips. You're watching Talk Tales. Michael Boychuk, we thank you so much and continued success to you, my friend. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Have a great day.